Hello and welcome. Come along with me as I book treasure hunt in Key West, Florida. I love the concept of Little Free Libraries and what they stand for. I love that we can share books together as book lovers, but it's also an environmentally kind practice. So when we're traveling, I am sure to bring a small box of books that I can unhaul, and I use the Little Free Library app to figure out for where we're staying, what Little Free Libraries are in the area, and you can easily from the app get directions. I will say, driving around Key West is not the easiest experience. But for me, it was worth it as I was on a treasure hunt to find some phenomenal books. I also want to take this time to discuss how Little Free Libraries are not all taken care of well, and they're not all wonderful experiences. This Little Free Library was actually pretty crowded. It could probably stand a little bit of a clean out. But one of the things I love the most is that they had this sachet that it was in here to help with the humidity. Beach and saltwater location Little Free Libraries have books that really struggle with getting mold and mildew and warping. And having something like this inside of the Little Free Library is really helpful. And I also love the personalization of the stamps. I mean, this is cute. I can go down this road, right? This Little Free Library is not residential. It was at a business. Sometimes, as you'll see later, that doesn't go very well, but this had a lot of really great options. So this is where a non-residential Little Free Library was a fail. I watched a guy leave this with his arms loaded down. The Little Free Library was left open. It had really been pillaged, and so the idea of leaving a book after taking a book was missed. This Little Free Library was adorable. They also had take a plant, leave a plant at the bottom. I think because it was winter, there wasn't any plants, but what a great idea. So I, again, loved this Little Free Library. I actually found a lot of treasures, and you'll have to stay tuned because I'm going to do the haul from all of this book shopping, uh, in addition to other book shopping that we did on this trip, in another video. So be sure to be subscribed so that you can see when I post that. So we had made our way to be fully downtown in Key West, which meant I didn't have a lot of driving to do in between some of these little free libraries. I loved the style of this little free library. It was colorful, it was painted so nicely and well taken care of. Since we were downtown, I decided to stop at a little free library that was outside of a pub. The pictures made it look so enticing and I could not resist. Unfortunately, there were no treasures to be had, which is probably expected. It's probably a pretty highly trafficked area. But I will say I loved the detail work of the painting of the books on the outside of this little free library. It just was so festive. And for anybody who is not a reader but has stopped into this pub, I just think you would be drawn to it. Next, we decided to visit a couple of the bookstores in Key West. 
First up is Books and Books at the Studio of Key West. This is such an interesting bookstore because I think Books and Books is a chain store, but this one has become affiliated with a nonprofit organization and it's owned by Judy Bloom. Judy Bloom is a well known author of middle grade, young adult, and adult fiction. One of my favorite things about visiting bookstores when I'm traveling is that a lot of bookstores will highlight specific authors and stories from that region. So here, after just visiting Hemingway's house, I was able to find some books about Hemingway. There were also books by Tennessee Williams, who was another local author. I saw this be performed with my mom. So look, banned books, A Wrinkle in Time, banned book. Harry Potter, banned book. The thing that I like about this is that it's new and used. Rare means expensive. In all seriousness, I really do love books that offer new and used books. It just adds to the treasure hunting feel and just makes the experience that much more fulfilling. True to form, this store also had a Florida-centric section. They also had books about Cuba and a whole actually a couple different shelf systems of Cuban books. Knowing how close Key West is to Cuba and how influenced Cuban culture is into the area, I really appreciated the inclusion of that area. I also loved the inclusion of this area. It has all these little ambiance enhancing pieces like the Lego bookstore creation, the little writer's typewriter and lamp and desk nook area just really lovely. They had a small section of classic novels, which of course I scoured. And then here in the general fiction area, I found this Sidney Sheldon book. I've been hearing more about him recently. I've not read any of his work, and so I'm trying to figure out which one I should start with. I obviously had to check out the fantasy section. That is always well, I would say one of my favorite sections to, to go to after the classics. I loved finding this Wendell Berry Jaber Crow as a new book in the general fiction area. Such a great book. Can't recommend it high enough. There also was a young adult area and juvenile fiction found Song of a Whale. This is a really great book. It has really great disability inclusion. So I highly recommend reading that book as well. Thanks so much for watching and until next time.